Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we've got something special. Army Painter was nice enough to send me this which is the 50 Paint Fanatic Mega Set and uh, so this has 50 of the new War Paint Fanatic set in it and in this video we're going to go through, we're going to put it through its paces and we're going to see exactly what this stuff is capable of. It's the new paint, it's supposed to be completely reimagined so my question is does it live up to the hype? Is it any good? We're gonna find out. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. All right, so some basics first out of the way for this particular set. I, there's other sets out there. I'm just talking about this one. Of the 50 paints you get in this, basically you've got uh, four different washes, two different sort of effects, three different... Um, like blood and rust and guts, and then you've got three metal paints, and then everything else I didn't say, that's all matte paints. So that's what you're looking at. It's a pretty good spread of colors. Um, it really heavily lives le leans into the green and blue tones, I'll say that. As per usual, it's not as heavy on the oranges and purples as I would like, but I, I suppose that there's a lot more call for that. Uh, that being said, there is some nice tones in here that I did really like. Now... The important part to understand about these paints right out of the gate is that they did completely reformulate from their original line. Um, the original line of paints, of Army Painter paints, which... So, the version of these that was before... Mm, how do we say this nicely? It was bad. It was very bad. Um, they just weren't good paints. They were thin. They were transparent. They were often highly inconsistent. And so... What I was first uh, considering when I looked at these was, is that changed? Is that improved? Do we actually have, uh, you know, consistency in the paint and how it's applied and its finish and its opacity? And I'm happy to say that on all of those counts, I'm actually really happy with this. Uh, without getting into the, the details, which we will over the rest of the video, um, I found these to be uh, quite a bit better in performing. Now... Um, from everything I've heard, the pigment density was vastly, vastly increased, something like a 3x uh, pigment density increase. They changed their suspension and their medium, um, so it's a lot more stable. Um, I found it could be thinned a lot easier. The finish was much more matte and consistent across the line. There are still some minor variations, but that's always going to happen in paint, um, and, and, and it should. Um, different pigments have different finishes, and that's how it should be if they're... If they're all exactly the same, then you kind of often have to add too many additives and it messes up the paint. So on the question of opacity, smoothness of application, finish, it is already leaps and bounds ahead of its form, the form of the previous generation. It's not even close. So let's put these things through some paces. All right, first up, we're going to do the basic stuff here. And now I'm going to be putting these out on uh, a wet palette to use them. And an important thing to note here is that I found they performed very well on the wet palette over time. Um, they weren't particularly hydrophobic nor hydrophilic. They, for the most part, did what I was looking to do on the wet palette. They absorbed an appropriate amount of liquid and stayed workable for a lengthy amount of time. So, that's not nothing. Um, it is something that I notice some paints uh, will sometimes have struggles with. Uh, and the other interesting thing to note before we get into the actual painting is that these paints exist in, well, I almost want to call it a triad system because that was what this was classically known as, but it's not. That means three, and this is six. So it's a say, say, sesad, six hexad system? Hexad system. There we go. Hexadecimal. Uh, I liked Reboot, too. That was a great cartoon. So at any rate, um, there's generally these six paints. So when you look at the bottle, you'll see that the paints exist in this range of six colors. And it will show you exactly where this paint falls, so you can understand what would be a reasonable shadow color and what would be a reasonable highlight color. Now, I will say that, of course, as you progress on in your painting journey, you need this kind of guidance less. And moreover, it becomes more inaccurate because you actually want to use other environmental colors as your shadows, as opposed to just more blue for a highlight and less a dark, or like lighter blue for a highlight and darker blue for a shadow. That becomes sort of inaccurate if you're actually trying to paint credibly to the real world. But for beginner painters, I think this is an excellent addition as it really gives beginner painters an easy map to say, 
yes, here's my midtone, here's my highlight, here's my shadow, and approach that with confidence. So I very much applaud them putting this on the box. All right, so now to begin, there is only one model we could possibly test our new, new paint set with, and that is a Space Marine. Uh, specifically, not just any Space Marine, we're going to paint this awesome Terminator. Um, this guy is from uh, the Leviathan box set. This is the, you know, redone Terminators. Um, I really love these dudes. I think they're probably my favorite Space Marines they've ever made. So our first test here is just going to be about layering. And in fact, most of what I'm going to show you here is just layering up the colors. Uh, and we're going to just get a nice ultramarine sort of color scheme going. The blue boys are boring and basic, but they are uh, emblematic of Space Marines and a good test for paints because blues, one, there's a lot of blues in this set, and two, their blue is often quite challenging to get correct to make it have the appropriate amount of saturation and richness uh, and to have it have the correct finish. So I thought that would be actually a nice test. So I went along and basically just layered this face frame up, starting from a dark blue, which I applied with a base coat, uh, just a big brush and base coating the whole thing, and then just layered my way up, 50-50 mixes, up into a highlight color on the highest parts. Uh, going for more of the spotlight effect on this guy, one, because I'm lazy, two, because I didn't need to paint the whole Space Marine for the video, uh, and to like, I'm not going for Golden Demon here, I'm trying to test paints, um, and three, because it just looks kind of cool. And so as I layer and highlight my way up, what I found was the paints working in layer consistency responded well and smoothly. Uh, so they took to thinning well. All layers you're seeing here are thinned basically consistently one-to-one -one with water. I found that across the different paints, I tended to thin them mostly the same. Um, so in most of the paints I've tested so far, which is about 35 out of these in here, I've, I've put a lot of these through the paces, um, the, uh, the consistency is quite similar. They're all very creamy. They are a little thicker than you might expect. And I saw that in the layering. So you do want to thin these at least one to one. Uh, so one drop of water to one drop of paint or one brush full of water, I should say, to one uh, drop of paint um, to really get them flowing and smooth and what you'd expect. That's true even if you're working on a wet palette. So, and, and I think that's because these are so pigment dense and because they uh, reformulated, they're actually really nice. They start quite thick, which can be a bit shocking when you uh, first start with the paint, especially if you're new, but um, it's great for the long term because it means you really, it's very easy to make a paint thinner. You can just add water or medium. It's very hard to make a paint thicker. So starting at this much heavier, creamier thickness is actually really nice because we can control our layering up from very thick paint if we're doing heavy wet blending, um, which these do excel at quite well, all the way down to very thin glazes. So having layered our Space Marine all the way up, that brings us then to uh, the next and most important challenge of any paint where oftentimes paints will fall apart. The next challenge is of course glazing. And as I said, we're starting really thick. Uh, it actually surprised me how much I could work these down and still have them retain their intensity and effect. So you do have to thin them quite a bit. So here with my glazing, I'm working about uh, three, uh, sometimes four brushfuls of water to one drop of paint. So uh, it is quite thin, but it, I had to get a lot of water in there to actually get them down into a glaze. Again, not a bad thing. I rate that as a positive. It means you have lots of control throughout that process of exactly how thick you want your paint to be. Um, the glazes held up just fine. The colors went on smooth. I didn't see any coffee staining. The paint didn't break up, anything like that. Um, so their pigment density, again, the sort of statement that it was higher, this gets proved out when it maintains its consistency across there, um, as well as the suspension was working just fine. So uh, passed the glazing test uh, with flying colors, had no issue uh, with that at all. I wanted to do a test of some skin tones. I think uh, skin tones are a really important part of any range. Um, this box comes with several different colors you can use as skin tones, both for light and dark colored skin tones. Uh, so I just, I only have a little tiny face on this marine, but it's still something. 
Um, so I just gave it a quick test. And I actually really like how this came out. This is no more than three simple colors of paint quickly applied. You can only see sort of this much of his face up. But I thought it came out really well. It was nice. It was smooth. Um, I've actually been very impressed by their flesh tones thus far, even in this set. It is one of the things I'd like to experiment with more. Um, anyone who watches this channel knows that I have an obsession with painting models with a lot of skin showing, and I'm fascinated by painting skin. So I am going to experiment with this a lot more. Um, I already use Speed Paint 2.0 in my high-end uh, flesh display painting um, as filters and finishes. Um, I made a video on that some time back. And uh, I hope that these could, you know, also become integrated into, into my process. So that's going to take some more experimentation. But for this uh, brief test on our Marine, I think his face came out just fine. Very impressive. This was, you know, maybe all told, I don't know, four minutes of layering paint. And I think he looks you know, pretty great um, for that amount of time. Pretty, pretty easy. Our next test is metallics. Uh, so as I said, there's only three metallics in this box. Um, which is a bronze, a steel, and a gold. So I'm going to test the steel and the gold on this particular little Terminator boy. And, uh, you know, recently I had tested the uh, Speed Paint 2.0 metals, and I found those to be a real pleasure to work with. These are a little gummier, a little thicker, uh, more like traditional miniature paints. Um, I found their opacity quite nice, so I put both of these over straight black. Uh, no challenge with the opacity there. I actually saw good coverage in one layer, so that is a, uh, a strike in their favor, uh, or, I don't know, something in their favor, for sure. Um, but they had good solid coverage, good smooth application. Again, I actually did thin this paint. Now, here it was maybe um, one brushful of water to two drops of metallic paint. The metallics didn't require as much thinning as the matte paint, but it did uh, still require some amount of thinning. And uh, overall, I thought this was uh, pretty good on the application. My honest answer is I think I like the Speed Paint 2.0 metals better than these, but these are legitimately fine, uh, which I know sounds like not that great of a review, but keep in mind, I think that basically every metal paint on the market, except for Vallejo Metal Color and uh, Speed Paint 2.0 metallics are garbage that should be thrown in the trash and forgotten about. So if I say it's fine, that's actually a pretty good rating. I would give these metals, uh, the steel uh, came out, I'd say, a solid B. The golds and bronze are probably a B-. Um, I, I, like I said, I think the Speed Paint Metal 2.0s are better, but these are certainly serviceable. And if you're doing tabletop stuff, they are way better than most other metals you're going to get on the market in finish, in opacity, uh, and in final shine and effect. Now... The one bright spot in Army Painter's original line was actually their washes. So light tone, strong tone, dark tone, all of those things were legitimately my favorite thing from old Army Painter. Now, these were meant to, or are, are meant to obviously be, I don't know, competitive with the traditional GW Citadel washes. So Agrax, Seraphim Sepia, Nolan Oil, and so on. And... What I found uh, using the ones from the past is that they were probably better. I liked them more, honestly, than the um, Citadel equivalents. Uh, and so this was already a good product, I think. And so I was eager to test how these worked here. I'm happy to say that in my testing of the strong tones, and you'll see them applied here, uh, both strong tone and dark tone, so that's the uh, Agrax equivalent and the Nuln oil equivalent. Um, they came out really nicely. I found they actually worked pretty decently over uh, the metals. They flowed really well. They still had a strong impact, but didn't seem to coffee stain much. It was an improvement over the previous version. In the end, these are still washes and have limited application. Um, like, a wash is a wash. It does what a wash does. Um, you're not going to use it to try to win Golden Demon, but you are definitely going to need it if you're going to get that whole army churned out by this weekend. So washes are super valuable. Um, and all in all, I thought this came out pretty well. I thought the washes passed. Um, it was an improvement over the old one, which was already good. So these are, you know, great. Uh, no complaints about them whatsoever. Next up, will they airbrush? The biggest question when you get a new paint set is... Is it going to go through the airbrush without issue? So, 
Let's give a test of that. I've already painted the Space Marine, so the Space Marine people, they're happy. You're good to go. If you're a Space Marine person, I hope I showed you that you can do a really high quality, nice Space Marine here. But of course, we can't do a paint review video without our old friend, Larry the Ogre. And so I wanted to give this a test through the airbrush. I just used, again, the same simple skin progression that I used. Now you can see Larry's skin is an absolute mess right now from previous videos I've used him in. Uh, and uh, But we, you know, I just airbrushed over it from the darker pink brown tone up into the um, pale flesh tone. And the progression of that was, again, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, just three quick layers up. And uh, all in all, I think it, it came out really well. I thinned these basically uh, three to one for the airbrush, so three drops of airbrush thinner. My standard airbrush thinner is an 80-20 mix of thinner and flow improver. And I, so I put three drops of that to one drop of paint. And I found that worked really well. No issues. Everything flowed through the airbrush really, really nicely. As you can see here, I get nice, smooth, effective transitions. I like to work a little thin and build it up. Um, the advantage of the airbrush is it works fast and you can build it up easy. I found these worked really well for that. Um, I was able to thin them down more as well and go for things like filters or doing other color changes when you want to just create these very, very subtle changes and blends with the airbrush. And they performed in that regard, no problem. So all in all, they passed the airbrush test and came out really well. Now, my last point here is more of a, a, a personal one. I, uh, I think that oftentimes you might wonder, okay, Vince, you know, you have this paint, you did basically a quick marine. I mean, this guy took you know, 45 minutes or something like that. And, you know, you airbrushed Larry in five minutes, but are you ever going to use these in your actual display painting? So this model, which again was featured in a recent video, um, I didn't mention it at the time, given the timing of everything, but uh, this was one of my test models for um, these uh, Fanatics War Paints. Um, I actually painted, used a bunch of these on that model. Um, so basically the entire model, I mean, probably 90%-ish of that model, was painted using these Fanatic paints and only the colors that came in this box. Uh, the only time I deviated was to get like some fluorescent orange and stuff like that, because if you're going to do fire effects, you got to have a good fluorescent. And I found them, they performed really well. They let me do display quality work. The finish was really matte. Like it was just excellent. It was everything I'd want out of a display quality paint job uh, and a display, display quality paint. So I think no matter what level you're at from uh, beginner to master or whatever that means, I don't know, advanced display painter, competitive painter, who knows what we're all called here. I have no idea. Uh, whatever level of hobbyist you consider yourself to be, I do think these can work just fine for you and will perform accordingly and meet you where you are without issue. So, in summary, I really like the Fanatic paints. Honestly, I think they came out pretty great. Um, I liked putting them through the paces. They will become a part of my uh, sort of paint process. So, all in all, they're, they're good paints. Um, for me, I would put them basically on the level of the best paints in the industry right now, which I consider to be Pro Acryl, um, at sort of number one and AK Interactive basically right there on the same level, the AK Interactive third gen. Um, these Army Painter have risen to that standard. There's nothing incredibly unique and magical they're doing, but there are things about them I really like. Um, I like that they're thicker, that, they, that you can really control the blend. Um, they work really, really, really great for wet blending and stuff like that. Um, expect a future video where we kind of deep dive into different blending methods, you know, and I'll, you'll see some of these paints being featured. Um, but uh, overall, they actually perform really well. So for things like weathering or fe fe sorry, feather feathering, wet blending, two brush blending, all of those things, they uh, these actually have excelled in and, and I thought performed really, really uh, admirably. So I like the consistency. I like the creaminess. I like the finish. Uh, I like the opacity. Uh, and, and all in all, they're going to become part of my regular paint rotation, which is, I suppose, the best review I can, I can give them. So I'd say check them out. Um, if you're interested in a new range of paints, uh, you can't go wrong. As I said, there's nothing magical. There's nothing special. If you already have a whole paint range and you're happy with it, these aren't going to change your life. They're not going to suddenly reinvent the way you paint. They're not going to suddenly, you know, win you a golden demon. That's not what's in this box. What's in this box is a solid set of paints that is easily, um, is easily on the level of the market-leading, best-performing paints that are out there today. 
Uh, and I think that that is to be applauded from Army Painter because they, they produced a really quality product here. So if you are looking for a new paint range, this could certainly be one you could look at. So with that, I'll say thank you very much. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop those down below. I'll answer every question you have about the new Army Painter paints uh, that, that at least I can in my experimentation. I always read every comment and answer every question. If you want to support the channel to help us keep doing videos like this, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can share this. That's obviously free. Um, but also, you can uh, go down below. There's hobby supply links for Amazon. You can buy that stuff if you need maybe some new brushes for your new paints. Uh, and anytime you click that, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it gives a nice kickback to the channel. There's a merch store down there. And of course, there's our Patreon, uh, which uh, I really can't thank all of my patrons enough. But they are who keep the lights on around here and who keep me doing this. Uh, and our Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.